Banakti Nefela Paragarov. Hello everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood, well-rounded mermaid, Iluria, and I am here to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with you in a very special way. The last time we had a Corona story time, I thought it would be the last time, period. But it looks like quarantine has gone on for a little longer, but there is light at the end of the tunnel with heaven's help. We will get through it soon, so this may be the last Corona story time. And in honor of that, and this very special holiday that we celebrate here, whether you're Irish or no, I have one final Selkie book to share with you today. And it's a little more involved than the first one that we read. This is called Selkie by Gillian McClure. I believe this is also illustrated by Gillian McClure as well. And just, there's so much amazing folklore in Irish culture and heritage uh, and mythology that it seems like we should definitely touch on that again. There are Selkies, there are Kelpies, there are Pukas, there are all manners of fae spirits. And since I couldn't find a story about a puka or um, another Irish water creature, perhaps a murrow. I thought that rounding everything out and sort of bringing things back to where we started in a slightly different way would be perfect. Before we get started, if you like what you find here, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and if you want YouTube to notify you every time a video from your favorite mermaid surfaces, you can hit that little notification bell, it won't spam you. But that definitely helps tell the algorithm that this is content worth seeing and stuff that you want to engage with. Comment, let me know what you think, let me know of things that we could do in future, I would absolutely love to hear from you. And let's get started y'all, because this is a beautiful story and I'm excited to bring it to you. Last thing, if you haven't experienced a story time with me before, I do Corona story time in a slightly special way. I am legally blind, which means that in order to see the text, I have to look pretty closely. I can't look away and show it to you at the same time. So what I'm going to do is read you the text and then show you the pictures so that you can get an idea of what's going on in the story as I read along. So, sit back, relax, get yourself something to eat or drink, maybe some tea, which is perfect for uh, this occasion, and snuggle in and join me for Jillian McClure's Silky. Far away on the edge of the sea, a boy named Peter lived with his granny. At high tide, the sea stretched from their cottage to Seal Island. But at low tide, the sea drew back and uncovered a long stretch of sand. Stay away from Seal Island, Peter's granny said. But the cries of the seals on the wind kept calling Peter. I want to go to Seal Island, said Peter. It's too dangerous, said Granny. I can walk across the sands when the tide is out. The sands are dangerous, said Granny, and they're soft in places and will suck you in if you don't tread carefully. But the oyster man knows a safe way across the sands, said Peter. He has oyster beds on Seal Island. Stay away from the oyster man said Granny. Don't try to follow him. And there we see Peter and Granny. And this beautiful framed piece. And then Peter walking away from Grandma as she tries to call him back, saying, stay away from Seal Island and stay away from the Oyster Man.
At low tide, Peter continued to watch the oyster band go carefully over the sands, leaving a line of sticks to mark his way. Before high tide, the oyster man returned with a sack full of oysters to sell. Peter watched him lifting his sticks one by one with the sea coming in behind him. And surrounded by all these beautiful seals we see on the edges here. Up top, we see the oyster man putting his sticks in the sand. And on bottom, we see him following them and picking them up. Can you see the seals in the border of the pages? How beautiful are these illustrations? One day, when Granny wasn't looking, Peter ran to the cottage where the oyster man lived with his wife. Peter found him outside, mending nets and chanting. One day I'll catch a sulky, a sulky who'll help me learn the language of the sea. One day I'll catch a sulky, a sulky who will help me gather riches from the sea. And that's just a random little tune I just came up with on the spot. That's not an actual tune. There's no music for me to read here. I'm sorry if it wasn't so great. <laughs> Please, Mr. Oysterman, said Peter, will you show me the way over the sands to Seal Island? The Oysterman jumped up and roared, Steer away from Seal Island, boy! and threw his net at Peter, but only caught Peter's hat. Peter ran back to his granny. There is the oyster man paring his net. And throwing it at Peter telling him to stay away, stay away, stay away. Why do you think they want him to stay away from Seal Island? Granny was angry. Next time, it won't just be your hat caught in the oyster man's net. He wants to catch a sulky, Peter said. What's a sulky, Granny? A sulky's a seal that turns into a girl when she takes her seal skin off, Granny replied. The next day, Peter slipped out to look for his hat. It was low tide, and he saw the oyster man far out on the sands on his way to Seal Island. The path of the sticks started from the oyster man's cottage. Peter thought, if I follow the sticks, then I can reach myself, can teach myself the safe way over the sands. He set out carefully. There we see Peter and his granny. And Peter, by the oyster man's nets, and then Peter following the oyster man's carefully placed sticks across the sand so they don't swallow him up. When he reached Seal Island, Peter saw the oyster man bent over his oyster beds. Peter went around to the other side of the island and came upon a flock of seals on the rocks. Suddenly, Peter heard splashing coming from a pool.
And there is the oyster man, bent over his oyster beds. And look at what we see on the rocks on the other side of the island. I think it's seals. <laughs> Peter saw a beautiful seal caught in one of the oyster man's nets. As he struggled to free the seal, her skin slipped off and a young girl stood there. Peter gasped, you must be a selkie. The girl smiled at him. Yes, I am, she said. How can I thank you for setting me free? And there we have a bunch of seals and one caught in a net. And Peter, with his amazing catch of the day, a sulky. But before he could reply, Peter felt the sea lap over the top of his boot. The tide's coming in, he cried. Quick, I must cross the sands while the oysterman sticks are still there. When he ran to the other side of the island, he saw the sea stretching over the sands and in the distance, the oysterman lifting his last stick. Oh no. You see all these seals on the rocks with the water around them. And Peter with his selkie friend looking out over the water, which now looks like he might be trapped on the island because the sticks of the oyster man are all gone. You must stay on Seal Island until the tide goes out again, said Silky. Peter knew he had hours to wait and that his granny would be worried. Dear friend, said Silky, you set me free and I will now begin to teach you the secret language of the sea. She taught Peter to hear the voices of the fish, to see the patterns of the waves and to know the words of the wind. The hours went by, and soon the tide began going out again. Peter told the Selkie, The oyster man thinks that learning the language of the sea will make him rich. The Selkie said, A greedy man can never learn the language of the sea. He's only listening to the jingle of coins. They laughed together and never noticed that the sea had drawn completely back uncovering the way over the sands from Seal Island. Suddenly, there was the oyster man with his net. Got you! Selkie tried to put on her seal skin and escape, but the oyster man grabbed the skin with one hand and held the net firmly over Selkie with the other. <gasps> oh, no! There we see... Selkie teaching Peter the language of the sea and the wind and the patterns of the water. And then the oyster man capturing Selkie and Peter looking on in horror and surprise. As the oyster man dragged Selkie over the sands, 
Peter heard his chant. Today I caught you, Selkie, I'll make you help me learn the language of the sea. Today I caught you, Selkie, I'll make you help me gather riches from the sea. Peter followed the oyster man ashore. Well, it looks like Peter found his hat as he watches the oyster man cart poor little Selkie away. will happen next. The oyster man took Selkie into his cottage to show his wife. Peter crept close and peered through the window. He saw the oyster man's wife dressing Selkie in an old petticoat. Do you know what a petticoat is? For those of you who have not been familiarized with this old-fashioned garment, it's something that goes under a dress. It's kind of like an old-fashioned slip, but especially for a skirt or a fancy dress. So there's the cottage of the oyster man. And there we see his wife dressing Selkie. Caught the page with my face that time. Big, big noses can be useful. <laughs> when Peter got home, his granny sent him straight to bed, but he couldn't sleep. He was worried about Selkie. He had to help her get back to Seal Island, and he was trying to remember the pattern of the sticks in the sand. Selkie couldn't sleep either. The seals were calling her. She saw the sea stretching out to the island, but she knew she couldn't swim there without her seal skin. Later, she saw the sand stretching out to the island, but she knew she couldn't walk there without the oyster man's sticks to guide her. Aww. There's Peter in bed, unable to sleep. And then the seals calling to poor Selkie. Poor girl. She can't go to the ocean without her seal skin and the oyster man has that. But if she goes on the sand, she could get sucked up by the sand, the holes in the sand. And that's why she needs the sticks. The next day, Peter went to the oyster man's cottage. He saw him loading his cart with oysters to sell. He heard him grumbling about his lazy wife who never got up in the mornings. Peter knew he would be gone all day. Inside the cottage, Silky sat weeping. A bowl of porridge the oyster man had given her was untouched. In her bed, the oyster man's wife snored. Peter crept in. Quick, follow me across the sands to Seal Island while the tide is out. I've remembered the way. But my seal skin, sobbed Selkie. I cannot swim the seals, with the seals without it. They searched everywhere in the cottage. It was nowhere to be found. Just as they were about to give up, Peter looked up in the rafters, and there he found 
the seal skin. So we have the oyster man getting his horse ready. And then we have Sulky crying alone. The oyster man's wife still asleep in bed. And Sulky and Peter finding a very special treasure hidden up in the rafters. I wonder how he kept the seal skin from falling off. Must be very thick rafters. <laughs> Do you see under the bed? Look, there's the oyster man's wife still sleeping. Do you see who's going up under the bed? <laughs> Peter's looking everywhere. Even under the bed. Taking the oyster man's sticks and placing them in the pattern he remembered, Peter led the way safely over the sands. When they reached the island, Peter turned to Selkie, but she had already put on her seal skin. Instead of a girl, a beautiful seal was sliding down to the water's edge. As she dove in, Peter heard her call out goodbye to him in the language of the sea. Peter felt sad. For a long time, he watched Selkie swimming with the seals. Oh. It must be a blustery day. Look at the wind taking Selkie's hair and blustering Peter's coat. And then we see Peter looking at his silky friend already transformed into a seal. She was eager to get back to her true nature. By the time Peter turned to go back, darkness was falling. The tide was coming in fast. He saw a light moving along the far shore. It was the oyster man returning. Peter set off. The sea swirled around his ankles, then his knees, then his chest. But he wasn't afraid because the patterns of the waves, the voices of the fish, and the words of the wind led him safely back to shore. There's Peter returning slowly back to the shore, nearly getting swallowed up by the waves, but being safe with his seal friend, not far behind him, looking on to make sure he was okay. As Peter came out of the water, he saw the oyster man raging outside his cottage. You freed my precious Selkie! Now I can't make her help me gather riches from the sea! Then Peter shouted, Dear Selkie, you have taught me better than all its riches is the secret language of the sea. As the wind carried Peter's cry out to sea, a seal's head slipped silently under the waves. And there we see the oyster man raging at his lost treasures, unaware of the treasures all around him.
And there we see at the end, Peter and his seal friend by the edge of the ocean. And that is the end. I even checked the last page just to make sure. <laughs> and on the back cover, we have some adorable little seals with their heads cresting just above the water. Perhaps they're looking at you. <laughs> well, if you're still awake, I know that getting read stories can often make us all fall asleep. I hope that you enjoyed this little time that we've had together. And as a parting little extra gift, I thought I might teach you a little bit of something. Do you remember what I said at the beginning of the video? That is the way to say, Happy St. Patrick's Day in Irish, in Irish Gaelic. So, if you want to learn how to say Happy St. Paddy's Day in Irish, it's banach, ban, ugh, like ugh, ugh, that, that, those mushrooms are nasty, ugh. Banach, tea, like, I'd like a cup of tea, but with a little e in it, banach tea, nefela, Na, fe la, fe like fairy, la like la 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 la, parig, which is Patrick, parig, pa, rig, orav, so or like something that you steer a boat with, or, of, like I'd like a glass of water or a cup of tea. And you put that all together. Banach tea, nafela, parig, arav. Banach tea, nafela, parig, arav. One more time. Banach tea, nafela, parig, arav. Banach tea, nafela, parig, arav. I hope that maybe you get to use this, the St. Patrick's Day, and surprise somebody with your excellent bit of Irish language knowledge. It's an incredible language, and there's a lot of resources online nowadays to learn more about it if you're curious. Thank you guys so much again. Happy Blessed St. Patrick's Day wherever you are, whether you're in the Emerald Isle or in the States or anywhere else in the world. I love this holiday. I have a lot of Irish and Scottish in my ancestry, so this has always been a very special day for me. And whether you're Irish or not, I hope it's a safe and happy one for you, that you have lots of good luck. I won't just wish you luck, I'll wish you good luck. And that you find your pot of gold at the end of your rainbow, in whatever form it may be. Love you guys, and be careful of the fae. They're tricksy folk. Happy shimmies and waves of love. Bye. Ooh, nose itch. If you haven't...